good old boy who loves burning rubber and driving fast. Yep, home away from home, Memphis International, off to Epping, New Hampshire, flying into Old Manchester. Here we go. All right, we have made it to New England Dragway. <laughs> I have here, Mr. Brian Loans. What's up, Clay? How you doing? Every video, y'all hear him. A lot He's of people. fast. You're watching the Clay Milliken <laughs> channel on YouTube. Yeah. All right, so I text you. I wanted yep. you to come by. Sure. This is home track. Yes. And I happen to know, because I've paid attention over the years, yep. you literally slept in the tower at yeah. this very race. Yeah, track. so the, the, the room that Tony and I are going to call the race on Fox out of is the room I used to sleep in on the weekends <laughs> when I worked up here. So I, when I was in college, I worked at Lebanon Valley Dragway on Friday nights because it was out by college, and then I would drive basically overnight to come here, and I'd sleep here on Friday nights and Saturday nights. I'd sleep in my truck, and then the track manager, Joe Lombardo at the time, gave me a set of keys, so I had a key to the gate, and I would let myself in and sleep up in the building up there. Yeah. <laughs> so if I if I hit you real quick with yep. first memory you think of when you think of this place. Um, the very first one I remember coming up, this is a weird one, but I remember coming up with my dad, I don't know, I was 10, 12 years old or something, we're sitting in the stands. I think it was just like a test of two night, but there was a guy that had this pretty crummy looking, like late 70s, early 80s Corvette, kind of like paint was all kind of jacked up, whatever. It sat a little weird. Well, he was on a racetrack and the thing must have had nitrous in it because it had it had like some little flame looking out of the headers. And honest <laughs> to God, it's a weird first memory, but I'll never forget that car because I thought, oh, this is awesome. Yeah. I mean, everything was cool, but like that one thing and the way the place smelled and everything and you know, it's still to this day, you pull in here and it's like you smell somebody doing a burnout and it's like, I'm freaking 19 years old again. So it's funny you mentioned smell. Yeah. Nikki just walked in here and one of the first things he said was this place smells like a match race. It's a great way to put it. It's actually, it's a great way to put it. That's it's a very good way to put it. Yeah. I mean, the neat thing about this racetrack is it's very small. It's like Bristol. Everything's really packed together. Yeah. So like when the fans are here, they're like elbow to elbow and yeah, like not to take anywhere from the big race tracks, the Z Maxes, the Vegases of the world, but like when guys are doing burnouts in super gas cars in Vegas, you don't know that's happening, you can't hear it or smell it. Here, a guy does a burnout in a stalker and it's in your pit area in three seconds. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the other thing I wanted to bring up was you mentioned in a post this week the weather. Oh boy. Yeah, this is this is cinch up the belt, put on the big daddy pants tonight. So Right now, it's like middle of the day on Friday. It's about, I don't know, one o'clock, something like that. It's a, the DA is 1,100 feet. By the time the second session of the fuel cars run tonight, it's gonna be down to like 600 feet, about 30 inches of barometer. Racetrack set sun on it, so that should be good. Uh, the guy holding his camera right now ran almost 338 miles an hour uh, not too short, uh, uh, not too long time ago. The fans here last year really got kicked in the shorts. I mean, we had horrible weather. Yeah. We had one qualifying session, so it's great payback for them. But like, it should be an absolutely epic show. So, I am campaigning. It's funny we were just talking about something yeah. like that. <laughs> yes, we I am campaigning with Jimbo right now yeah. to pile the timing in this thing at the finish line and try to hit that magic number. Why not? I mean, honestly, I, and again, it's not my money, and they're not my <laughs> part. So of course, why not? But. We're gonna have very rare opportunity to see this again. I, in, in my mind, we have Friday night qualifying in Seattle. That can be maybe even a little warmer. Sonoma, obviously, is the other place yep. until we get to the fall. But like, it's gonna be months or a year before we see this happen again. So, giddy up. Yeah, I'm giddy I'm, up. I'm not thinking about ET so much as yeah. the 340. Yeah, we and could it, see that tonight. You know, we had our NHRA Insider podcast, and Tony and I were talking about it. We were talking about the funny cars, and we kind of stopped ourselves. We're like, hey, listen. Like when Salinas ran 308 last year, you know they apparently lost a whole eight, nine hundred feet. If you can run 308 in one of these things, the math says it should be going at least 340 when you finish the run. Yeah, exactly. So, you know they did some work on the racetrack here. So uh, they did some paving at the very top end where there was some unevenness and stuff like that. So it's tabletop flat going across the finish line now. You know, it, I'm a homer, right? <laughs> I love this place. Uh, I'm a Red Sox fan. I love Fenway Park. I love the Wigan Dragway. But it's like, if this little place, even if it's only for a little while, could become the fastest drag strip on the planet, it would be no happier moment probably in my life. 
So back to the Homer thing and this being the home track. Yeah. So I Googled this. September 11th, 1966 yes. is when this yep. place opened. Yep. Give us a little history because it's very unusual how this place operates. Yeah, so one of the neat things about this place is it doesn't have, a, there's no corporate owner here and there's actually no single owner here. New England Dragway, when it was built, the hot rod clubs of New England got together and they sold shares. And all these hot rodders bought shares, about 800 people did. And those shares allowed them to buy this piece of property and build a racetrack. So there are still, it is a privately held corporation. So there's still like 700 shareholders out there that each own, some own one, some own 10, some own 100 shares of the racetrack. And so it does two things. One, it does slow down decision making because you have a board of directors and stuff. When Marcus Smith decides he's gonna repave his racetrack, he says, repave my racetrack. When New England Dragway decides to change stuff, it has to go through a process. But the other thing it's done is it saved this place. So a few years ago, a group tried to come in and they pitched the shareholders. They wanted to buy up the majority of the shares. And all of us that love this place were petrified of this because the guy was gonna pay way too much money to buy this nice big flat piece of land that's right by a highway. And the way things work in this world now, those of us that think more than five feet ahead of ourselves go, What's gonna happen here is this guy's gonna buy the shares and four or five years from now, maybe three years from now, he's gonna say, I can't make any money here. I gotta do something different with the property. And then the place goes away. So they have the shareholder meeting. It was 727 people to 10. So it was the best thing that could have happened. It solidified the fact that the racers love this place. A lot of the shareholders are second and third generation. So it's their fathers or grandfathers that had the shares and they're you know protecting their legacy. So. Um, they saved the place. We're going to be here for a good long time, and uh, God willing, we see somebody run 340 tonight. <laughs> and I hope it's that car right there. It'd be nice. <laughs> It'd be nice to see this, right? this part right here. Yeah. yeah. Hey, and we know what that thumbnail would be. 340. It would be, it, it, is, it is a barrier that is <laughs> humongous, and it's one that we always break them in this sport. We always say, well, they're never going to go faster. Well, we always go faster. But this 340 number is going to stand as one of the big ones. And for those of you history geeks out there, when we talk about a funny car and a dragster doing this, and you think, how is that possible? All you gotta do is go back to 1984, Gainesville, Florida. 260 miles an hour for funny car, Andy Bernstein. On the same day, about a half hour later, 260 miles an hour for top fuel, Joe Amato. So precedent set. Yep, exactly. And there you got a little history of this guy, his home racetrack, we're looking forward to all of it this weekend, yeah. but tonight especially. Bada bing. And so one more story for this place, and it involves this guy. So back in the day, uh, before you came to know and love me as the NHRA guy or know and throw rocks at your TV when I speak, uh, I worked for the IHRA. When Clay was absolutely running up one side and down the other of that organization, I was one of the announcers with Brian Olson and Bob Uncleford. We were travel around. And so coming here was obviously my favorite thing, the North American Nationals. Well, before I had that job, before they hired me to join that circus, I was just a guy that worked at a racetrack. So Bob Motes would always run right after Top Fuel on Friday and Saturday nights. Well, as you'd expect, Clay Milliken, being the class of the field, was in the final pair of Top Fuel cars. So the way that the old lighting system at this track worked is we had this big, giant, like Frankenstein's monster-looking knife switch that would ran all the power through it. And it was at about 1,100 feet in the right lane, and it was probably maybe 15 feet from the wall. The, the poles here were very close to the wall. So anyway, the track manager sends me down there and I'm standing there not 15 feet from the side of the racetrack and here comes Clay driving the Warner trucking car, goes by at God only knows 330 something miles an hour. I thought I was gonna die and then I shut the lights off. So that's it. <laughs> so we're getting ready to warm up here shortly and uh, I see Jesse why is weight going back in the nose? Uh, that track is going to be good. want to uh, not wheelie the car. <laughs> so I'm putting it back in. <laughs> it ain't going to fall out either. <laughs> I was headed there next. The weight's not going to fall out of the car. We're not going to have that problem again, but uh, weight's going back in. Last week it was out. Track was not as good as what we're expecting tonight. I don't think this first run is going to be double throw down like we throw, thought, but the later run, let's go. The human highlight reel getting his work done. That's right, here we are ladies and gentlemen, representing Fisher Honda in the pit area of the human highlight reel, Clay Milliken, <laughs> Rick Ware Racing. Remember, 15 East Michigan Avenue, Ypsilanti, Michigan, 35 and a half years, the same location. 
Nobody beats Fisher or Honda. Thank you very much. You heard it here first. From the original human highlight reel. records on this qualifying run but we gotta let one later tonight see what we can do nice solid run I'll get to the back of the line for tonight there we go bro keep the car's front down tires keep on digging okay. and ready line I like it. 75, 332. Is that what I heard? Let's go. Perfect. We'll take it, right? 75, 332. Not bad. Good opening lap. Yeah, we'll this place been pretty good to you, hasn't it? It has been good to me over the years for sure. Hopefully, it's good to me on Sunday. <laughs> That's what matters. We, we're talking 340 and all that stuff, but at the end of the day, a Wally would be the, the rural ticket. Yeah, that'd be real nice. <laughs> no, I'm not coming to get your weight. <laughs> it's gone up five pounds. <laughs> <laughs>
All right. So this week you've been in the news and everybody's oh sad and I, I'm sad too. But let me tell y'all what I'm really worried about. This monster is now going to be top fueling full time and I'm worried about that. <laughs> I don't think he has anything to worry about quite yet. <laughs> Rookie stripes are pretty thick right now on the back of my car. <laughs> All I know is, uh, uh oh, one of the best drivers ever to set in a race car. I got to deal with him full time with full focus. You'll be fine, dude. You'll be fine. Hey, I'm I'm so I'm so proud to be racing with you, brother. Thank you, friend. Okay, I had to go talk to Tony since he was in the news so much, and I got to run side by side with him there. So. If y'all can get that thing to zoom in and, all right, 841, 302 at half track, 286, 75, 332. When we made that run, we were number one. We are not number one now. I think we're like third. But anyway, a good opening lap should put us towards the back for this next oh. run. That's really important. So y'all see all the time on our car, Jacob Companies. Meet Jacob. Hello. <laughs> We've been having him out at a few races. First time you rode with us, so first time I've got to grab you on some content. I'm glad you're out here, buddy. Thank you. You bet. All right, let's get ready for this night run, y'all. So last week at Shadyside, Jimmy Dale and Poland challenged me to take a little wing and go more than 200 miles an hour. So the little wing just rode down the racetrack. It, it's a little cockeyed. But it's on there. The little wing just went 375 at 332. Challenge accepted and accomplished. Let's go.
65 and 80. Yep, that's not an improvement. And it absolutely shook his tail off. That's a, uh, that's probably a two Tylenol shake. It was a good one, but we're still in. We're qualified and we'll get ready for tomorrow. That's what we do, it's racing. Well, no two ways about it. We had, I don't know what we had. We had thoughts of uh, crazy quick numbers, big speed, even was talking about that 340, but the New England weather did not do what the weathermen said it was going to do. Weathermen, we know how that goes. So, ran good on the first one, went up there for the second one, not thinking about 340, but more thinking about like a 370, 369, somewhere in that neighborhood. Long story short, we shook the tires, and that's it. I don't know where we ended up qualified at, but we're in, we're good. The 375 was a good start for the weekend. Anyway, that is a wrap on Friday. Appreciate you guys watching, liking, subscribing, sharing. Don't forget that merchandise, playmillican.com, right? Playmillican.com. Playmillican.com? Are you what? kidding me? What's that commercial? Dot com? <laughs> what is that? Uh, Something dot com? Yeah, it's like a Realtor business, or maybe, a yeah. Or something. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but it's ClayMillican.com. Anyway, see you in the next.